All right, so uh, we're going to just look at how to do quickly do a floor plan uh, using Adobe Illustrator. And I've got Illustrator open here. And of course, I do want to use this as a print format, not a screen format, because uh, I do eventually want to put this in a binder uh, as a printout. And if you start working in sort of low res uh, video formats, they're not the printouts aren't going to be very sharp. So you want to make sure that you're working in a print environment. And you can always scale print down, but uh, you can't really scale low res stuff up very well. So I'm going to choose letter format. Now this one is going to give me a letter format that is portrait. Uh, I could have uh, started over again there and done a create new here and then customize that. So I could say letter, but I want it to be landscape. Everything's in points right now, of course, so you can change it to inches or centimeters if you're so inclined. Um, eight and a half by 11 inches. And the color mode doesn't really matter for what we're doing. CMYK is a print color mode. Of course, screen modes are RGB. It's up to you. It doesn't really matter. Uh, you know, it's giving me a little, oh no. It doesn't really matter for what we're doing. So it's up to you at this point. Certainly if you're working in video, it's RGB always. There's no CMYK. K of course is the uh, black. Uh, so we're either red, green, blue, and the combination thereof, and luminance. So we don't have the fourth one. So I'm open up here to my uh, work area for the screen. And uh, I'm not going to do precise here. I'm just going to go off the cuff uh, in terms of a room size. Uh, but a couple of things I want to look at uh, before I start is um, some of the stuff in the view modes here. So I can show a grid which is great. So that way I can work in a grid format. Now I can use a snap to grid, which means that anything I do, uh, if I create text or anything, it'll snap to these little grid points and stuff. So it just helps me along in my layout. So I'll put that on and I'll put on rulers as well. So I'm going to hit show rulers so under rulers, under view, show rulers. And the thing about rulers is um, with a ruler, you can grab uh, guides if you want to create a guide for yourself, uh, but that's what we're using the grid for, so I'm not going to worry about that. Just Command Z or Control Z if you're on Windows. Uh, and if I right click on here, I can change it. So right now it's in e inches and feet. I'll just leave it to inches for now. So now I'm just going to use uh, my rectangle tool. If I click and hold this down, all the shape tools come up. And we can custom, these are the, the shapes that they start with, but you can customize shapes uh, as well by using the shape builder tool. So I'll show you how to use that in a minute. But uh, so there's this. If I want this to be out all the time because I'm going to use it all the time, I can just click on that little um, that little uh, arrow pointing out and it pulls it out of the I'm just drawing stuff. Pulls it out uh, from the uh, toolbar. So here I have this and I have all these tools avail available to me. So if I uh, click on my rectangular tool here, and I can click and drag. And if I click and drag, I could go, you know, the eight inches by six down here. Um, it's for my room. The room I'm in right now is actually quite more, more shoeboxy. So I'm going to make it like this. So we're basically just trying to approximate what our room is. I have selection tools here, so a direct selection tool will select the entire thing. Um, and if I wanted to, um, you know, I can do this kind of a thing. So this is the selection tool. This is the direct selection tool. The direct selection tool a lot will allow you to drag certain points. Lasso just the point I want. Um, and if I use, say, the uh, the pen tool here, I can create new points along here. If you see that it shows up and then um, a little plus sign shows up, if I go across this line, if I hit the plus sign, I create a new one of these. And then with this tool, I could work that one. And so I can create different points, start creating different shapes here. 
So with my object selected, and this is an object, it's a shape, but it's called an object. Uh, with this selected, you can go down here to your swatches. Um, and if you look down here, you can see that uh, there are different colors uh, I can choose. And I also have like a stroke and a fill. So right now the fill is white and I actually don't want to have a fill. I'm just going to make this nothing. If I wanted this to fill as a color or something, I can just fill it in as a color. Uh, but no fill is good for my purposes for this uh, particular task, which is to create a floor plan. And if I click on the stroke, uh, I can change the uh, color of the stroke as well. So if I start changing the color here, I can do that. Um, black is fine for now. And I can go up to my properties and and you'll see that I have these options as well. So I have fill and stroke. So I can hit, you know, stroke five pixels, nine pixels. Depends on how much you want. I'm just going to put two looks good. That'll print out nice and dark. And now I can sort of start filling in my room. So I want to think of where, where my doors are, where my uh, windows are, uh, possibly plugs in the, in the wall. Um, Furniture, of course, furniture can be moved around. So there's certain, you know, objects can be moved. And even in my floor plan, I can, I can even think about where maybe I can move stuff around for my shots or my film. If I want to just start filling this in, I can just start filling this in. So, uh, so it stands out right now is that if I start um, in here and you'll see that I have the ability still to move this around the grid if I wanted to. If I want to just say, you know, this is this is just perfect. This is my these are my walls. I'm going to just lock this for the moment so that I don't accidentally grab it when I start building all these things. Uh, what I can do is I can go up to object and I can go into lock and I can just say lock this selection. And that way this isn't going to be able to be touched, right? Uh, so I can put text up here. I'm going to say living room. Uh, so that'll be the name of this floor plan. And it's snapping to the grid, as you can see. Uh, and again, if I want to, I can lock that as well. Just say lock that in place so I don't accidentally, when I'm walking, moving around here, I'm not, not moving this and then cussing and saying bad words. Uh, so in my room, I've got a desk here. So I've got a desk uh, that sits here. Uh, that's where I'm working right now. Uh, so I'm going to have a desk. Right now it's filled with black. You can see the fill is here and my swatches are here. I might want to just say all my furniture is going to be sort of this light brown. So um, if I click on my fill and I decide you know, light brown is what it's going to be. Text tool if I want. I can call this desk. So that's perfectly fine. Uh, and if I want to combine these two things together, you can see also that this, uh, you know, this has a fill. That's what I accidentally clicked. I just got a fill of a, this light brown here. I'll move that back too. The fill is, sorry, light brown and the stroke is black. And now if I want to combine these two elements together, I can sort of lasso them and I can group them. And now if I wanted to move the desk around, it's all going to move together as one piece. And once you've grouped something, of course, you can ungroup it by just clicking on it and then saying, just ungroup it. Ungroup, group. Uh, so again, if, if I think the desk is always going to be here uh, for my floor plan, I can lock this as well. Just I can unlock all these just as easy. Uh, you can see unlock all here. But uh, if I just lock selection, so that's there. And then I can start moving again. So uh, in this room on the opposite side, there is a day bed over here. And now I'm just going to speed everything up here. Just uh, going bit by bit, creating all the different little doodads for my room. And uh, just using basically the fill and stroke uh, text tool. Trying to go in there. I use the, if you call it, click and hold down the text tool, you'll be able to 
uh, make it vertical uh, and then now we're going to get into the line tool in a moment. So in this room there is a uh, the door to the room is in here so there's a door here so I can use my line tool uh, and I can just indicate a door which is usually done like this and you can see there's no stroke on this as well so I can click on that uh, make it two point like the wall itself and this also has a bathroom door over here so so that's going to indicate the doors and if I wanted to I could indicate bathroom and of course your text can be uh, customized as well um, so if you click on your text your text has properties and uh, here's the characters are here if you don't see character you can see it up here character and paragraph uh, and also if you don't see anything always go to window and go looking for it and say oh where is the you know whatever I'm looking for where's the transform tools where's the type tools are here character styles all that kind of stuff so you know and this goes out to the hallway now I also uh, have windows here so I'm going to indicate windows so I'm going to use another geometric shape like this but this time I'm going to change the color so so out here there's a window beside the desk and right now I've just filled with black so I'm going to say blue it's going to be my windows and now I can since I've made this and I have several windows around here I have windows over here I can copy and paste this um, by command C or control C con control V we also know that you can paste in place so if you uh, edit paste in place it'll paste it where it was not in the middle um, which is useful if you're doing new artboards and things like that but uh, the other one is uh, holding down the option or alt key and then just dragging uh, and that's my promo so it's doing that so there's some uh, uh, windows here and there's also windows on the other side so if I do the same thing now here I want to transform this by by rotating it so um, if I hover over here I get the little rotation button and if I hold down shift after I grab it it'll start locking into like 45 90 and then I'll say that's it and there's one here and there's one here I forgive that little line that's just from the uh, like I said the the promos the thing that is highlighting everything uh, that's just part of its keys um, so yeah windows here windows here now this is important because uh, now when I, it all goes into my lighting plan right so when I when I decide on where my lighting is going to or when I'm thinking about lighting uh, I'm thinking about um, especially the time of day I'm, I'm shooting in uh, and and windows can be tricky now these these have shutters on these windows which is great because you can close them um, but uh, but above above these windows are open windows so you know if, if I'm shooting throughout the day the morning light uh, is going to be different than the afternoon light which can be different than the, the daylight or the night light sorry um, so it's going to be you know this is going to change and it's something I really have to consider in my lighting plan and here I can figure out where I can start put my camera and lighting and all that kind of stuff uh, as well so um, so that's just basic you know your basic tools that you're using there's also a shape builder tool here and if you wanted to build like custom shapes using existing shapes uh, of any sort um, you can uh, create so I want to put just a star in this together. Yeah, the selection tool. Uh, see, right now it's on snap to grid. This is what it does, which is great to some degree, but then sometimes it's not going to work for you. So I can always turn snap to grid off uh, and then 
say I wanted this to, you know, these two shapes to combine together, I can take my selection tool here, select both of them, and then just use the shape builder tool to just draw a line in between the two of them. And then it creates a whole new shape for me. So you can make custom shapes. Uh, and now that's together as a particular shape. So if there's something you're doing, you can do that. I uh, say I want to put lamps in here as well. I have practical lights, right? This is something we're filmmakers. So I may say practical light and all my lights will be yellow. So I got a practical here, practical here. Uh, and of course I can also hold down my alt key and there's a desk lamp or something here. I uh, make it a little smaller and then I just indicate, you know, in my legend that this equals practical light. And if I wanted to indicate, say, uh, the plugs in the room, so there's plugs here. So I'll say I'm going to make plugs uh, red. So, uh, and I can populate my room with all the wall plugs. So I know where all the power is coming from. And of course I can indicate at the bottom of my plans exactly what that is. So that if you're reading the plans, it's very obvious. I'm just holding down shift to do extra space. So we go to, to you know do our lighting plan and everything. All this is here. So these, these are great. And now, now that I've got this living room, I could lock the entire thing if I want to now. Just select everything and just say lock. Uh, selection. I'm not grouping these, I'm just gonna lock them. And then if I wanted to create new versions of this, say I say this is, this is just the floor plan, uh, but I'm also gonna do, use this for working out my blocking, I can, I can reuse this, this, uh, entire scene. So what I can do is I can go to, uh, what's called artboards and I don't see them here, right? So I'm looking, oh, I don't see artboards. So, well, I guess I'll just give up. No, of course you won't. But I just want artboards, artboards. There it is. So this is artboard number one. And if I want to, I can create a new artboard by just clicking plus which is fine, but if I wanted to take this and make it another artboard, um, I can actually click on the artboard. And we'll just call this living room floor plan. And if I click on this and just drag it over top of the plus like that, you can see, uh, oh, it says it won't do the locked ones. Well, that's kind of a jerky move. All right. Well, if that's the case, then that's the case. I can unlock all and then now I'll just do make a copy of it and I can recall, you know, relock everything if I want to. Uh, the nice thing about locking is now if I, if I want to, so I'll just call this lighting plan or something like that. Uh, if I want to go back now and just uh, relock everything, I can do that by just, you know, I, I like the idea of this just because I, I can, once once this is here and I, it's set, I'm not going to have to accidentally move stuff around. And that way, if I want to, now I can, I can put icons in. Now we have uh, a file already of some floor plan icons, just basic ones we can reuse. And now I'm just going to speed up the video basically just copying and pasting everything into my floor plan, placing my characters, placing my lights, adjusting where they are, sort of working everything out in advance. So there you have it, just the basic illustrator, I'm using it for very simple tasks of creating objects, using shape tools, text, and just understanding stroke and fill, all those things, and you get that through Photoshop and InDesign or most all the other Adobe products you'll find. And everyone else does that as well in most uh, knockoff products, if you will. So uh, have a good day and enjoy.